Marisol, thank you. You know, every once in a while you meet someone who makes you think differently about the world around you. Carissa Phelps is someone who did that for us here. She's a top-ranked business school graduate who's turning down top-dollar jobs to help the community in her hometown of Fresno. Now, that sounds impressive enough right there, but that's before you hear where she came from, abandoned by her family at 12 years of age. She entered her teenage years homeless and working the streets just to survive. Now, Carissa wants to do all she can to help children like her. This is her story. It's called Parkway Drive, but everybody knows it's Motel Drive. That's what everybody calls it. From the time she ran away from home at age 12, the odds were against Carissa Phelps. Living on the streets, surviving any way she could, she was preyed upon by men who said they would take care of her, but didn't. If you see any guys, you go with them, hang out. You're runaway. Carissa is telling her story in a new documentary. In it, she recounts her descent yeah. into the mean streets of Fresno, California, the seedy hotels, back alleys, and juvenile halls of her youth, fearlessly reliving the memories of a dark past. He let me call my mom. I never said that before. He let me call my mom. She didn't come. More amazing than her survival has been Carissa's success. Not only did she escape, she excelled, earning a law degree and an MBA, never forgetting where she came from. Write it down. Or the kind mentors who helped save her life. Mrs. Wegerman, above learning math in your class, I learned a few other things. I learned that I could do things. Thank you for believing in me. I needed it, sincerely. Carissa, a student with the potential to go anywhere she wants. <laughs> and you have. Now she speaks out against youth homelessness. So Carissa, take me to the beginning. How did a 12-year-old girl wind up on the street? It was abusive and we were too many kids in one house. I had 10 brothers and sisters and my stepdad was beating up my brothers and trying to exploit my sister, and I just thought, I'm gonna get out of here before he does it to me. When people hear about a kid on the street, it can sound like Tom Sawyer, but really, it is savage. It's a jungle for children, and they are certainly the prey when they're on the street. What did you have to learn the hard way? That I was, I was a target to be sexually exploited. They're very much understand your psychology and that you're vulnerable and they exploit you very slowly tell you things like I love you and I'll be your boyfriend and they're 24 years old and you're 12 or 40 and you're 12. It's so heartbreaking to hear it but the fact that you're here is proof that there was a turnaround. What was the turnaround? There was a counselor in juvenile hall that told me I had potential. I was looking for approval and attention and love and there were people that were willing to do that that were in positions like teachers and counselors. And through bits and pieces of that, I pieced together a family that's, that's still intact today. You and, made your own family. Yeah. And you went through high school and you did well. You went to college. You got a master's. I mean, things that people have everything going for them in life rarely achieve. How do you explain it? <laughs> well, the law degree, deciding to go to law school, was about wanting to change the situation that I came from. Going to business school was kind of my wake-up call of how do you actually get things to change on the, in America. And I needed the tools in business school, I think, to do that. I recently resigned from my position in private equity, which is a really coveted position to go into right out of business school. And I did it because of all the support. I know that this is going to be carried forward and that I'm going to be a leader in this. I, I have to be. Tough decision to leave? Big money, big times, everybody <laughs> wants to be there, Wall Street, getting that big finance money. I had to embrace myself, embrace this mission that I'm on, and move forward with it. How's the documentary going? It's terrific. I mean, I'm, I'm so blessed to have this medium to be able to get it outside of me, like I said, and to give people a visual and a face on those kids that are experiencing this. What made you say... No, I'm going to go back. I want to do a documentary about it. I want to show what's going on. I want to almost relive it. That fantasy of I'm going to make it out and tell people is what got me out of it. It's what kept me going. So this is fulfilling my destiny, my promise to myself at the young age of 12. And the reason I'm here today is because I told myself at 12 years old this is where I was going to be. I was 
always wishing that I had been part of the civil rights movement, part of something that was bigger than me. And now with my story, with coming out and seeing the problem the way it is right now, I can do that for people that are voiceless, people that are homeless, kids that are just invisible. I can stand up and fight for them. And it's, it's a wonderful feeling. Carissa Phelps, wildly impressive. Please go to abcnews.com to find out more about the Carissa Project and how you can help homeless teens. We'll be right back.